All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN 4. Brian Azio, Doug Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. What a week we are about to embark on. What an afternoon we're about to have. Can't wait for it. Yes. Cannot wait. How are we feeling on a beautiful Monday here in Toronto? I feel fantastic. I feel like a wild animal that was brought in by another species, and I'm going to tell you why. For months, I took to the streets, and you guys know what I look like. Couldn't run. Couldn't go for more than 30 seconds. And there was a pack of two or three guys that were jogging together. They were a group, and I saw them look at me. And on Saturday, I did 5K, and right when I started, they started. I looked across the street, and the guy gave me the wave, and he said, you're with us now. And I went with them, and I did the 5K, and I felt like a wild animal that had been brought in by another wow. species. A wow. new pack. A yeah. new pack. Who dis? Look at you a joining new pack. a wolf pack. I could tell they were looking across the street at me saying, look at the moose over there. He can't jog for more than 30 seconds. And time and time again, it was like a motivator. I'm like, I want to be with those guys. I saw them. The one guy just said, you're with us now. It was just a wave like wow. this. And I said, wow. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Look and I'll happy. tell you. Look I'll tell that. you something else, Hazy B. The Hazy B Redemption Tour is back in full force because my good friend Stephen Jagger, who you called a bum two weeks ago when you <laughs> said he wore brutal shirts and he'd never do anything. He won on the tour yesterday. Yes, he did. So good for – remember that? You called him a bum. I don't you said that guy's saying a that about bum. him. I yeah. don't think yeah. I would ever say that. Dude, Noodles, I brought that guy's defense? name up and you were like, come on with that guy. He's a bum with those really? stupid Mick shirts. Really? Jagger, Mick Jagger's your boy now? I, I don't see it, although yeah. he's going to Augusta. So sh <laughs> shout out to Mick Jagger. Yes, yeah, but shout out to him. Bum. It's just another one. It's like the <laughs> Sacramento Kings, all They're these back. teams, they all prove you wrong, and I'm glad that he did after you said that about him. Okay. I don't remember that, Noodles. Maybe you have I I don't a better remember ever that, the verbiage. But... I do have a good memory, and I do not remember JP, the verbiage. JP, find the clip. Bum. He said, oh, Jagger, that guy's a bum. He, he wears those stupid shirts, and I was like, oh, no, okay, he's a pretty I good player. I don't know if the word bum was used, but, I mean, it, it probably there might have been some backhanded sarcasm. Hayes, you're good at that. Yeah. I admit you it, made a comment about him. I Maybe sarcastically. I, I don't recall no. him ever being at the forefront of any of our conversations. <laughs> no, it was a like, throwaway when we talk comment, about probably. Him? It was probably when you guys were choosing, hey, we're going to do a three-pack that turned right. to do a ten-pack. Exactly. When, he, when exactly. he won the tournament, I put my hand out to the TV, and I said, you're my guy, Jagger, because yeah. the other guy, you, you shoved it. Well, because Sheffler gave couldn't it. make a five-foot putt. To push yeah. his, to a, a playoff. Who, who cares? He wins Augusta f for fun. He had his D game, and he finished second. That's what's terrifying. His D terrifying. game. He was chopping it around basically all week, and he still yeah. almost won that tournament. Yeah. And uh, he's not playing this week, but obviously he will be in Augusta. And I guess all weekend they were saying – Tiger Woods was in Augusta. Those were the big reports doing a scouting oh, trip. God, what are really? you scouting anymore? You've been playing there for 25 years. I, I'm not sure what you possibly could scout. Although, who am I to say you should turn down an invite to play Augusta National? Naturally, you should if you get that invite and that opportunity. But this time next week, we will be buzzing because it will be Masters Week. Yeah. But, um, you know, what a weekend it was where, you know, sure, maybe Stephen Jagger. Maybe, maybe I had a comment about his pants at some point. Or shirt or short game. Water under the bridge. Water under the bridge, but there are still other things and other <laughs> teams and other cities that I have called out over time that I do not believe have redeemed themselves whatsoever. The Buffalo Sabres being high on that list. Um, the New Jersey Devils, obviously, they've kind of faded into a position where they're not likely going to make the playoffs. In fact, I don't think they're even a part of the equation right now. It seems like we're pretty set, right? We're eight teams in the West. It's it's set. Like Vegas has come alive now. They've picked up points. They're in. Nashville right. actually lost to Arizona, which was a bit of Shocking. a shock. But they're in. too, I think. Yeah, like it was. exactly. It was one of those nights. It's like, okay, game 19, or they've won 18 in a row. You know you're going to have a dud at some point. And Arizona had a game. Jane yeah. Doan's son, too. Yeah, that was well, cool. they, what was it, 8 5 or something? The game was a, a crazy game. Yeah. But yeah. the eight are effectively established out west. It feels like in the east, it basically is. You know, it's between Detroit, I guess Philly and Washington are fighting for the third seed in their division and who's going to be the wild card. But. Tampa's getting in. We'll see them on Wednesday. Florida's in. We're going to see them tonight. And the Leafs can technically 
clinch tonight if they win, and I think Detroit loses. There's some sort of formula. Combination. There's a yeah, combination. there's some combination that can be put together that we'll see the Leafs clinch and, and win tonight. But that's a formality. Obviously, that's just a matter of time. And, um, you know, now that we've turned the page, we're into April here. It's go time now. Like, now the weather's nice. Again, we're talking about the Masters next week. The playoffs are right around the corner. NBA playoffs. The Jays are off and running. They get a split at the Trop. Gosman looked great yesterday. They're in Houston tonight. Everything's coming together. I- yeah, let me just let me pose guys. this one to you. Okay, it's go only, ahead. It, go ahead. We did it with the Leafs, and I'm going to throw it to you, Brian Hayes. It's only the first series of the year for the Blue Jays, but your one takeaway is what? My only one takeaway. One away, series is okay, but I think the 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 but is that stadium has been a problem for them historically, and they got a split. That's a big start. I think Gosman pitching the way he pitched is Big the relief. number one storyline of the, the first four days of the season because all four games played out you know, completely differently. The two Jays wins, their bats were alive, Tampa couldn't muster up anything, and then the two middle games, Tampa dominated and the Jays couldn't do anything. It was like a really weird series yeah. where you know, game one and four was all Blue Jays, game two and three was all Tampa. But I think the fact that the bats came alive in many ways, Justin Turner hit a home run, Davis Schneider hit a home run, obviously Vladdy's off the Schneid uh, early and often. Like there was some power hitting, which you needed to see. And I think Gosman pitching, even though he was on a pitch count yesterday, he looked really, really good. And hopefully that can put that concern behind you. And now you're going into Houston. They just got swept by the Yankees. Yeah. Like the Yankees yeah. just swept the Houston Astros without Garrett Cole. And – the Astros are in a position where I don't know if they're right for the picking or if they're going to come alive and lay a beating on the Jays starting tonight. But I love that the Jays walked out of there with two. That's all that matters. You know, it's so early in the year. They have 158 games left. <laughs> Maybe yeah, next know. time you play a Rosarina, just throw them in. Like, get them to just say first base. Like, yeah, stop pitching he, to he that can guy. Do damage, especially to the Blue Jays. You know, he yeah. can definitely do damage. Um, but Justin Turner had himself a great day yesterday too, right? Like that's yeah, a great professional day. hitter, runners in scoring position. He like moves moves the chains. Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly why you wanted to to bring him in. So I think overall it was uh, it was a positive weekend, especially on the road. It's a tough road trip. It's a really difficult start to the year. Like I said, they're in Houston tonight. Then they go through Yankee Stadium before they even come home. But I think you you get home and you're 500 game over 500. You're ecstatic. Ecstatic. You're ecstatic yeah, you're okay. with that, the start of the year. And and are you – so those are positive storylines. Is there one, like, concern – like, level – not a level concern. What, well – Like, is it just consistency? Like, literally, because I was yeah. watching the games, too. It's either like, hey, they're up 7-1 or losing. <laughs> right. Know, it was, was a really no, strange like, hey, tight weekend. game. Yeah, it, it was so. a strange weekend. There wasn't much situation. Like, there were, I guess, you know, the Bichette errors that starts and then next spasms yesterday. I would say Bo is probably – the outlier in terms of any positivity that came out Easy of the Easy stealing bases. Like, once you get to first, you might as well just go to third. Yeah. Like, there's some stuff going on in terms of the fundamentals of this team. And Bichette is a guy that's going to be highlighted because of, you know, he fumbled the the, the ground ball. It should have been a turn double play. It's a grand slam, I believe, the next pitch. Um, you know, a couple of tosses over to first that were not necessarily crisp. That's been his history there. But it's early. It's early so for him. Early. He had a pretty so good early. year defensively, all things considered, last year. Yeah. And then next spasms yesterday he had to come out. We're not sure if he's in the lineup tonight. We'll track that. But it's too early, really. Like, it's not like football where you – once you've played one game, you only got 16 games left. You know, right. it's – with baseball, you just want to get off to the best start you possibly can, stay in the race – get hot through the summer, and come home hot. And, you know, obviously that wasn't going to change regardless of what happened over the course of the weekend because the Yankees in Houston are the best example. This doesn't mean the Yankees are going to win 100 games. And it doesn't mean Houston's going to win 65. It was just a right. four-game series where everything broke their way and Juan Soto played a massive role in that. Like, that guy's going to be the king of New York yeah. real quick. Um but it's good to have baseball back. And, again, they continue their trip tonight. Bowden Francis making his first start tonight. Uh, Richard Griffin will join us. Griff coming up in a couple of hours on that. And it's a great sports night tonight because you got the Jays in Houston. you got the Leafs in Florida, and we'll get to that here in a moment. And you got Caitlin yeah. Clark up against Angel Reese, LSU versus Iowa in the women's bracket, which feels like the championship game. It is a replay of the championship game from a year ago. It's getting a ton of buzz and a ton of hype, deservedly so. 
So you got that cooking tonight as well. Um, and before we, I guess, start to look ahead to, to what we can expect this week for the Leafs, because they have Florida in town tonight and Tampa on Wednesday, that game on Saturday uh, was a really fun game to watch, and I would assume an even more entertaining game to be a part of in the crowd. You know, it was just remarkable to see the building 80% Leaf fans. Explain 85. me something first before we get into how amazing that crowd was. Is it as simple as the people, those were real fans in there, those people just, they they don't have 500 apiece for the tickets? Like, wh- why was that crowd so crazy? I have because a they're theory not suits? on that. A couple, a couple of different cheap, theories. Cheap tickets down there, so all the goons that can't buy them here go mm. down there. I think that's, that's really a big part of it, Noodles, but also what you see in Buffalo that you cannot get here. It does. I've never heard of it ever happening at any point in my lifetime. I've been living in this city for 40 years. You go to Buffalo, and we saw it scattered all over the stadium. You can get eight tickets beside each other, six tickets, 12 tickets, yeah. So what you get is bundles. You get groups. You get the boys rolling Buddy's in. Saying, trips. You can't do right. that in Toronto. I've never heard of anything other than maybe four tickets. Like maybe four. And usually it's it's like Scotiabank is loaded with twosomes. That's what it is. We got two tickets. I'm bringing my wife, girlfriend, friend, son, daughter, business partner. And that's it. And it ends. So it's like there's 19,000 tickets and – you split it up. It's basically 8,500 or whatever the math is, 9,500 twosomes where you go to Buffalo and everywhere was like the Matthews t-shirt guys were behind the bench. You know, like that's that's six to eight tickets of buddies that are right beside each other. So you can get a buzz going, you can get a vibe going. And then obviously they're way cheaper and that's a road trip. It just you know, sucks because roadie, everyone, so when they chirp the Leafs, you got to listen to it. Oh, you haven't won. You haven't done this. And they're like, oh, your crowd's so quiet. It's a joke. It's like, actually, that's not the real crowd. That crowd that was in Buffalo is the real, like, well, that was, that's Those Leafs are the guys Nation. that are up in the 300 level yeah. at Scotiabank. Those are not the people that are in Platinums at Scotiabank. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the difference. And Dude, Noodles, no disrespect the to the people 20... that are paying for the money, that they are paying pay, for pay, the tickets down you know low. Uh, point being is... Doogie just put in the, the group chat, some tickets for $23. You can't get a drink at Scotiabank for 23 I know. But it sucks so for the players because think about players, and, and you pay the money, you can do whatever the hell you want. But right. I always find it still ridiculously crazy to start a period and the lower bowl's empty because people are drinking and stuff. They were in the stands ready to go every period. They, and you pay were. the money, you could do whatever you want. But that looks so stupid at the beginning of the period in a big game. People aren't even in their seats. That crowd was awesome. Imagine that in the playoffs where you come out and everyone's hooting and hollering when you skate out on the ice. And please don't come at me it's saying... It's loud in the playoffs, the, though. It's, it's way louder in the playoffs. It, I, it I is, will say... You can't I, compare a Monday night in November to a playoff atmosphere down there. It is it is a lot louder, a lot better in the playoffs. I'll but, give you that. You know, but I, I and also, hey, Hayes, you and I were at that Edmonton game, what, last Saturday, Saturday, yeah. you know, it was, remember I pointed out to you, it was full right from the drop of the puck. Mm-hmm. That was a Saturday night. People knew the attraction on both sides. Like, that was, to me, more a playoff atmosphere than what we see on a Tuesday night when, you know, Team X is in town. That I remember saying to you, Brian, like, look at everybody's in the seats here. Because like, that, that was an was event. That was a playoff. Exactly. That, that was, was an, an event. event. That was McDavid's here. You can't miss it. Like, tonight's a great example. Tonight should be a playoff game. Like, this should be a yes. playoff game. And like, Leaf people fans should are be smart pissed fans. off and fired up in there. They understand what's coming. It's likely Florida. If not, it's Boston. And Wednesday night, it should be massively you know, loud and energetic and emotional in there because Tampa, obviously we know the history from a year ago and there's a chance they play them. If they get through the first round, they could play Tampa. Who knows how this is all going to break out. And I really don't know what to expect tonight, but you know, the Buffalo crowd, yes, it's cheap. You can get bundles of tickets. So you get groups, which allows for it to, I think really, really pick up in terms of the energy. Um, But also that that's a road trip like that. That is, I guarantee you, 5,000 of those Leaf fans that were there booked that in September. And they're like, we're going for the night, we're going for dinner, then we're going to the – and they're, they're, they're popping and they're boozing and they're having a great time. That's not 
going to happen every single night here. You know, that's just not a reality for a nine to five type of town on a Monday or a Wednesday. That's a Saturday night road trip. Matthew scores 60 and it was incredible. And it's not, it's not exclusive to Buffalo. Like I saw someone send out a couple of great tweets that they have, they're the only team in the league that has a home rank in Toronto, Buffalo and Ottawa, but it's the truth. Like they, they really do. And you could argue when they go through Western Canada, when they go to Arizona, Montreal, not nearly as much, but you get 25, 30% Leaf fans in there. Um, it happens. Like, that's Leaf, Leafs Nation is the largest hockey community in the world. Like, and they travel and they have money and they have passion and they want to find this team and find the games. And Buffalo's an hour down the road. Like, it's just a perfect mix for what we saw on Saturday night. Um, but how you, you bring it here, I mean, it's not going to happen. Like, we've been saying that no. for 25 years. We've been having that conversation. You're not going to pick up that market or that atmosphere and drop it at Scotiabank. It, it doesn't happen. It's too expensive. Yeah, it's, it costs too much. Happen. It's too hard to but get tickets. You know, It was a lot of fun. Reality. That's all. I, we'll leave it at that. It was great. It was, it was awesome. Fun. And you're right. It was it, awesome. There's no, no criticizing it. But, Brian, you could make the argument that there's people that probably live – in Mississauga, that's like just as much time to get to Buffalo than it is to yep. get to traffic and you name it to get downtown. So it's like, hey, we'll go right instead of going left. Like that's that's part of the argument, not argument. That's part of the equation as well as, hey, you know, it's just as easy for us to get to Buffalo right now. Yeah, well, so, that's a huge part of it, Noodles, for sure. Right. Like if you live in St. Catharines, Niagara Falls, Hamilton, it's right. just as quick. It's inside yeah. an hour to get there as opposed to getting downtown and Mm -hmm. traffic we know it you get right over the bridge you're right at the rink basically like it's just yep. on the other side yeah. of the exactly. bridge to get in there um but you know everyone was waiting for matthews and he got it and his reaction would speak to i don't think this was hanging over him because you know he's been on 59 for like a, a week not even it's not like he hasn't scored in 10 or 12 games and he was waiting to break through and that's like the monkey off his back but his reaction, it did speak to, obviously, the magnitude of the statistic. He can breathe now because you got to get there. And it opens up the door now for the ultimate question. Does he breathe easy and keep rolling and chase 70? Does he take his foot off the gas? I don't see why he would. But it was, uh, it was a pretty incredible moment to see his reaction, the fans' reaction, his teammates' reaction. You know, only the ninth player in NHL history to score 60 twice in his career. It's it's pretty incredible company that he's in right now. And no modern player's done it. Ovi did it once. Stamkos did it once. McDavid did it once. Pasternak did it once. This guy, like, he's on a different level. Just to think, Hayes, he totally is. And just to think, like, if he got 60 once and then he had, like, 32, 38, 40, like, that's still good goal scoring. But to get back to 60, like – two years later that's that's insane man like usually guys that do that where it's like so that one shot deal where it's like everything i shot went in to do it twice it's just incredible to watch and you could tell he was fired up about it that reaction after the goal like that was what i'm talking about though special the crowd was it was like everybody was freaking out they acknowledged him after crazy it happened on the road in buffalo and it still sounded like that and felt like that but just to do it twice and to do it so soon Noodles, it's a it's a it's special. incredible it's feat. Special. Yeah, it's special. It is. It's special. And and you know what? Like as much as we talk about it, he's thinking about it. He's probably you know teammates. Like you, you we were talking about it the other day, and it, it's a different context. But when Zach Hyman was chasing fifty, now that was his first time outlier season, all of that type of stuff. But what I'm what I'm more pointing to is your teammates are invested in it as well, so they want to get you the puck they want to do these things so you could tell that the whole team wanted Matthews to get there so to your point Brian now you're playing Florida a team that you potentially could see or you know will see 50 50 chance here are you you worry about the him getting over to 62 or are you just worrying about winning games like to me I think it's the for lack of better words the monkey off his back and it's not even a monkey it's just it's a it's a a number he wanted to get to. Now let's see if he can chase 70. Let's see if he can chase wins. All of that type of stuff. 
But I think the team can just kind of have a collective sigh going, okay, we got him through that number. Let's mm-hmm. keep chugging here. That's what I my focus was. Yeah, I, I agree. I think 60 is, is obviously such a bold number. I think 61, you know, now you you start to move the goalpost or establish them. 61 is his next. It, that's a personal record now. If he hits that, I think. What's as I 66, said, Hayes? See, that's six, more than Ovi? 66 to me is the number that you really want now. Like 70, obviously, it goes without saying yes. because it's so bold. But Ovi's greatest season is 65, and that was back in 08-09. And yeah. I think if Would he gets to 66, feather. I think significantly. I, I really think when all is said and done, this guy's chasing down being considered the greatest goal scorer of all time. Like that That's that's the pace he's on. It's kind of Mahomes-like in terms of the conversation, like what Mahomes is – Created. I'm not talking about the greater legacy of winning and MVPs and championships. Mahomes in a completely different category from that standpoint. But I think if you get to 66, you can say now he's done something. He's done two things Ovechkin's never done. Score 60 twice in a season. Ovi only did it once. Get to 66 goals. Ovi only got to 65. Like So if, if we're 10 years from now trying to compare and contrast their careers, I think that matters. Like I think in this world that we live in, in yeah. particular, this narrative-driven debate, you know, back and forth type of conversations. If you can drop the hammer and say this guy did sixty twice in a year and sixty-six in a year, Ovi can't fight that back. You know, like no. Ovi's rep, uh, Ovi's resume is what it is. He's not going to score yeah. sixty-six next year or sixty-seven. Yeah, if you're, if you're getting to happen. the end of the line and they had the same number total, then you're going to be breaking down little stuff. Exactly, like that. exactly. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where we're going. Um, so yeah, we got a big week here because the, the Panthers are here tonight. It's going to be a big game. They've got Tampa here on Wednesday night. They're in Montreal on Saturday. Jays are playing. We're a week away from masters week. Last week we were doing our awards and it yes. turned out to be a draw, right? It was two, two. And we established with that being the case, we'll come back on Monday and O and I will hand out our top 10 Maple Leafs. Since 1967, we decided to go with the 67. That's obviously the last time they won the Cup. Expansion. So we're going to break down our top 10 Leafs since 67. And then Noodles, you have, we'll have a vote on that. Are we going to put it to the public? Oh, is that well, the plan? I, I, I we're going like to put it to the public. Say, but yeah, yes, not. I agree. Noodles, noodles is going to influence in his own way. And then it's going to go to a public vote. And it's going to, by the end of the show, our fans, our listeners and viewers, they're going to decide. Okay. Okay. So, so it's a I, double whammy. Say, yeah. So what do you want? You, I'm going to say, hey, I like, you know, O's no, no, list no, better. You have to be assertive and you say, this list is better. And you might be able to sway people one way or the other. Okay. And the thing is, is I am really bipartisan in this one because I'm not, I don't have the history of Leafs living here. I've lived here 13 years. I didn't mm-hmm. grow up here, right? So, hey. uh, you know, I'm going to see familiar, obviously, names, guys that yeah, I like, course. guys that I played against. Yep. So, you know, I'll weigh in in my own unique way, and then the, the fans can weigh in. And then if you want at 7 o'clock, or do you want to hit a, a, a clock, Hayes? How do you want to handle this? Yeah, I, I think right before the show. I mean, maybe oh, 645 yeah. or something. 645, we're going to yeah. call it, you know, and then okay. we're just going to say who's leading the vote, and then kind of Noodles is going to weigh his sense of where the list is, and then go to the vote, and, and you're going to name a winner. Like, it's just, okay. this <laughs> is judgment day on Overdrive. It's judgment day. Okay, I okay, can't wait so to see these lists. I'm cut tired. Cut well, we're going to do it this hour because I think it's fitting with Matthews doing what he's doing, obviously. He's likely going to factor into both lists. It's just a matter of where he happens to be because with every new record he establishes, you know, he puts himself right at the forefront of what we're talking about here. This is a, a team that has been around for, for over 100 years, and we're going back to 67, and there's so many great, great players. Like, I was going through my list over the weekend – and it's, it's completely subjective. This is O and I. This is how we feel about it. So obviously it's based on talent, production, what they did, winning, fandom, how we felt Reputation. about their game, their character, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. all going to be a bo- you know, buffet of different reasons for it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to our list this hour. We'll throw it online. Noodles, you'll have an answer. People can answer for it. We got Chris Johnston coming up today. Richard Griffin will join us on the Jays weekend. Jays in Houston tonight. We'll start looking ahead to that. Start looking ahead to the game tonight. Again, Leafs uh, Panthers, it's going to be a significant one down at 
Scotiabank Arena. So we got a big day, big week. Overdrive is off and running. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. All right, Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Chris Johnston coming up in about a half an hour. Leafs Panthers tonight. You got Iowa LSU on the women's side of the bracket. Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese. That's picking up a lot of steam. How about your Wolfpack NC State into the Ooh. final four? I have to sh- send out a congratulations to my good friend Leroy Ott. NC State freak. Every golf shirt, NC State. Mm-hmm. NC State Wolfpack golf bag. Knows everyone at NC State. Goes to every game. And I never said a word. Because it was like, I wanted to say to him, do they ever even get in the tournament? <laughs> and I've been waiting all this time, and finally the Wolfpack are in. Yep. Leroy, I've congratulations. Never that, I've never heard you mention that name once in 10 years of working with you, though. Oh, there so he is. I, and I, front I, runner. <laughs> now they're in the what, final the four. What, the NC State Leroy's or my game. boy Leroy Ott? Leroy Ott. I've never heard that you mentioned that name. Well, he doesn't come up often. He's my buddy down in North Carolina. I'm not going to say, hey, I got a buddy that's an NC State Wolf. You would have said, who cares about the Wolf Pack? They're irrelevant. Yes, that's exactly what I would have said. Yeah. (laughs) I would have said that because there's And I think the women are in the Final Four, too, aren't they? Yeah, they they are. You're right. Actually, you're lucky you didn't bring him up because it would have been a soundbite for Hayes saying, they are irrelevant, and yeah. then you yes. know, now they're Nobody relevant. Nobody cares so, what anyone yeah. in NC State says. <laughs> exactly yeah. what you would have said. So now, and then that soundbite would have been brought up here on Monday's show. So yeah. I'm, glad I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you didn't because then I don't have to chew on that because you're right. The, the men and the women are into the Final Four. And they knocked out Duke, too, which Leroy would have been dancing in the streets, man. Oh. You Dude, knock out Duke. I'm telling you, like, just backyard party for four days straight beating out Duke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. it's such a massive win. Like to get there to begin, I think it's the first time in the Final Four since 1983, something like that. And Jimmy now, Valvano national championships. Oh yeah, there you go, Jimmy V. What a Southern hand. What a Carolina handle, Leroy. I love it, Leroy. No, his Ott. name's Lee Ott, but I call him Leroy sometimes. His middle name, I'll bet you, is Roy. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. NC State, the Wolfpack into the Final Four. Zach Eady and Purdue in there as well. Zach Eady, a good Zach Canadian Eady. boy who's just a massive, massive human being. And a stud, too. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly. He's got a big chip on his shoulder, too, right? He thinks the whole world was against him and everyone betting against him, but... All of a sudden, Zach Eady's making things happen. Well, he hates the idea of everybody just thinks he's good because he's bigger than everyone else, which is a pretty big benefit. Comment. Well, I mean, he is seven foot four or whatever. And Dude, you still got to do your thing out there. Absolutely. And he who can was move. number ninety nine for the Celtics that just was gigantic and couldn't. He got drafted oh. a couple of years ago, and he was just a stiff. He couldn't oh, get it yeah. done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, was, what was his name? name? <laughs> uh, Taco Fall. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> My Taco guy Taco Ball. couldn't cut it. No, you're Taco, right. Taco, that's right. Taco was a massive human being. He barely yeah, He played. was nine feet tall, Taco Fall, and he Taco could Ball. not play. Yeah, you're right. Great pull by JP. Taco Fall, yes. This, I'm just about reading him. about him. <laughs> he was reportedly five foot nine at age seven. <laughs> age seven. I don't doubt it, dude. <laughs> I got kids that are older than that. <laughs> Five foot nine. At age seven. I'm just reading about him right now. Because wow. I, I was not only a tall member of his family, his younger brother. Oh, I'm sorry. His younger brother was reportedly five nine at age seven. Well, two of his uncles are six foot eight. Yeah. So, oh, my God. Taco was yeah. probably six two by the time he was yeah, that Yeah, I was going to say, that is crazy. Taco oh. fall. So yeah. don't just say you're tall, you're getting it done. Taco fall. Yeah, you got to play. You got to yeah. play. Yeah. It's a play. tough name, though. No, tough yeah, name. Taco fall is a great handle. Um, all right, what do we got going here? We got our top ten. Do we yeah, want to get into the do top it. ten? Do we go ahead, Hayes. Hayes. Go ahead, Hayes. You want You're me to first, go first, and then I'll drop first. the hammer and embarrass you. Go ahead. Okay. So how do we want to do this? Do you, I think I need to go from ten down to one? And let me let me throw out some names here because I want to be respectful of the honorable mentions. Okay, I want to okay, get yeah. some honorable mentions in here, and I'll, I'll rifle through them quick. But some of our buddies are included in this. Great leaves. Uh, I got Lanny McDonald, didn't make my top 10. Felix Podfam, Morgan Riley. I thought long and hard, Morgan mm-hmm. Riley. Long and hard. Thomas Cavalier, Darcy Tucker. Long and hard. John Tavares, William Nylander, Gary Roberts, Ronnie Ellis. Ron Ellis was a great leaf. Yeah. Young kids don't get how long he was a leaf, how good he was. Um, so those are just honorable mentions. 
Okay. So let me get to my 10 pack here. I'm going to start at 10 and rifle down to one. We'll get down Dude, to one at it, some point. Do it, do it however you All want. Right, there it is up on TSN. I have Rick five at 10. Rick five was the first 50 goal score this team ever had. He had 53 times in a row. The eighties are the darkest period, probably in leaf history. And yeah, it was a tough decade, incredibly tough, but Rick five was a shining light throughout the eighties. He was the captain. He's also still really involved in the team. He's always around the team. There's a lot of stuff with the team and within the city. I got Rick five at 10. I got Curtis Joseph, my only goalie, sorry noodles, but my yeah. only goalie at nine, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. put up a four years, but four unbelievable years. Legend. Yeah. Legendary 99 and 02 run. It was, you know, they were a really good team. 99, they weren't great. They weren't expected to do anything that year necessarily. Cujo put them on the back, dragged them to a conference final. They lost to Buffalo. 02, we know who they lost to, obviously, in Carolina. But I got Cujo at nine. I got Mitch Marner at eight. Um, into his eighth season, you know, perennial all-star, first team all-star, something this team has not had really at all in their history. Puts up massive numbers. He's already, I believe, top 10 in points, assists, all that kind of stuff. First to 400 points, first to this amount of assists, first to this amount of goals, all that kind of stuff. Marner at eight. I got Solming at seven. This is where it really got tough. Like really tough with Marner into Solming into Clark at six. But I got Solming at seven, Wendell at six, Dave Keon at five, because Keon at five, as opposed to higher on the list, is because he did a lot of his great, great work and great winning before 67, right? So this effectively started the 68 season. Obviously, he won his Cups before that. He won his Conn Smythe in 67. Um, if we're talking the whole career, Keon would be higher. But from 67 onward, I have Keon at five. Sittler and Sundin, I have Sittler at four, Sundin at three. The only reason I flipped it, I put Sundin at three, and that's purely biased because I got to see it. You know, Daryl Sittler was, I didn't get to see it. I was born in 83. I didn't get to see him in his prime. I understand his greatness. I almost put him at three and Sundin at four because Sittler's still here. You know, Sundin obviously went home. He's not around the team much. Daryl Sittler is the face of the Maple Leafs in many ways and has been for a long time. Sittler at four, Sundin at three. I have Matthews at two. And I have Gilmore at one. Let me explain why I have Gilmore at one over Matthews. It's simply because of the winning. Um, Matthews, I believe, is one run, one big run, probably a conference final away from defining himself as the greatest Leaf ever. He's a cup final away from it being undisputed or close to it. And obviously a cup win away from a mic drop. No one's even... There's no conversation. I think Keon would show up. Gilmore would show up. Sundin would fly in. They'd all anoint him. You're the king. You're the greatest Leaf of all time. But he's got one playoff run, one playoff win, you know, one win. And Doug Gilmore in 93-94, they both represented something very similar. When Matthews arrived, it was like, all right, they finally figured this out. You had to tank. You had to drop. You had to get the guy. They got him, and then the rest is history. They're going to make the playoffs for the eighth straight year since he's been here. That's significant. Gilmore represented that in 91. Like I said, in the 80s, darkest period in Leaf history. Them acquiring Gilmore was the start of a completely new era. Um, what he did in 93, 127 points, 94, 111 points. They go to the conference final back-to-back -back years in 93, 94, and Dougie Gilmore was Dougie Gilmore. And, yes, it's a bit biased as well. I love Doug Gilmore, probably my favorite player of all time. I got Gilmore at one. So Gilmore at one, Matthews at two, Sundin at three, Sittler at four, Keon five, Clark six, Solming seven, Marner eight, Joseph nine, Rick five, ten, top ten Leafs since 1967. I don't know how you beat that. I really, I really don't. I apologize for going first. I should have gone second, but you go ahead and try to top that. Joe from the bridge, mic drop, and let's. Very good list. I'm Very insulted good list. by what I just saw, so go ahead and put my list. Don't slap the face of my dad and your dad not putting Dave Key on at number one because that's exactly what you did. <laughs> if you ask any generation before us who the greatest Leaf is, it's Dave Key on. That's why he's at number one. Mr. Dryden, the quiz master, he'll tell you the same thing. He's also insulted. Austin Matthews at two. The goal scoring speaks for itself. Obviously, there's recency bias. He's an unbelievable player, and he's going to be one of the all-time greats. Also, my favorite player at three, Dougie Gilmore, <laughs> and close friend, unlike yourself, Matt Sundin, <laughs> <Right. laughs> same thing at number four. I have to agree with you with one point. Daryl Sittler didn't see it. The 10 points, legendary superstar, mm -hmm. legendary guy around the city. Wendell Clark, you could easily make a case. 
easily make a case that he could go at number one with the popularity, mm -hmm. what he meant to the city, the shot, the fighting, the toughness. Yep. He is what Leafs Nation is all about. Cujo, another close personal friend of mine at number seven. <laughs> love Cujo and love what he did for the city. The mask, the lion on the mask, all of it, the big saves. He was a gamer, and what a goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Borea Salming, everything about Borea speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. Competitor, coming from Europe, doing what he did in the city, fending off the Broad Street bullies like he did. Everything about Borea we love. Rick Vive, the fact you had Mitch Marner ahead of Rick Vive. Rick Vive, two-time 50-goal scorer, first in the organization's history. I think that was also insulting. Mitch Marner at number 10. He is going to be an all-time great. He's going to have a statue out in Legends Row with Austin Matthews, but there's just too many greats before him. That's why I have him slotted at 10. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free to cast your vote on Overdrive's account on okay. Twitter because I think that that list represents everything about the Toronto Maple Leafs that you need to know. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I had a chance to go second and redeem those people up at the top of the list that you insulted. <laughs> and you disrespected my dad and your own. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> listen. Okay, listen. Noodles, these are, go ahead. Well, okay. I'm looking. Can we put them side by side because they're all the same players, right? Just moved around, correct? I don't think there's any. It's omissions. the exact same players. Yeah, which is it's actually just shocking when you think about it. Moved around, right? Yeah. Because I, you know, Marner is is the guy that like he's tenth and he's eighth there. Like it's the exact same players. It's just the jockeying for position. Mm -hmm. Now, what, do you guys want me to weigh in right now on my initial instinct, my well, gut instinct? Or let me, me throw to the honorable mentions out again before you respond, yes, because this please. is something that I think you you can probably take Dude, into this account. This is irrelevant. Here. This is irrelevant. This is like buying a Ferrari and, to, and saying to no, the guy, "You put another tire underneath it as a spare." Here, well, Thanks a lot, pal. See, that's disrespectful, and I won't accept that because <laughs> Lanny McDonald, the man I've met, and I, yes. I cherish, I cherish the good opportunity friend. to Lanny's stop a good and chat friend, with him. A dear friend, Lanny McDonald yes. was a great, great leave. I think of him more as a flame i think naturally most people do but still is a great leap morgan riley's been here this is like his 11th season thomas cavalier your boy like cavalier was cavalier was a great great leaf so was brian mccabe so was so was caber absolutely yeah. like gary roberts william nylander the, the is uh, you give this another eight years when his deal's up he'll be in the top 10 very likely you could give it another three months and he might go he into the top exactly top. that that is a really important stipulation that if any of these guys go on a deep run if they win a cup Needless to say, Matthews goes to one. Marner moves into the top five. I think maybe top three. Maybe he's number two. He really could be. Riley goes in. Tavares goes in. Nylander goes in. Five of them will go into the top ten, I think, immediately with a cup. Immediately. Uh, anyway, Noodles, go ahead. All right. Well, let me ask noodles, you. Noodles, I just want you to start with <laughs> this. It's <laughs> okay. like a quiz. Tell it's me like I'll the start, quiz start the where quiz. you have to make a statement first. This list is better, and here's why. And I don't J care if it's not me. Okay. Jeff O'Neill's list is better, and here's what I'll tell you. Okay. Holy good Jesus. <laughs> I but I had a question before I wanted to announce that. Okay. Respect. It's Go game ahead. respect game. Go Dave ahead. Dave Keon mm -hmm. won and did all of this stuff you mentioned before sixty seven. Yes. But it's still the same player. It's still that's where that's okay. what put me over the top was yep. the key on at one. Because Mm -hmm. Since I've moved to Toronto, and you guys can tell me more about the backstory of, I think it was him and Harold Ballard, Ballard had, the organization absolutely. had a falling out. Yep. But Keon has oh, been told for me, ever since I've walked into the city, he's the greatest Leaf who ever walked the earth. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I've been told. So... He, you know, and Matthews is going to challenge that, obviously. He, like, again, very simply, are, he failed to acknowledge it. But, but no, I, I, what I wanted to acknowledge is... <laughs> It's the body of work of Dave Keon, not just, hey, from 67 on type of thing. He still played before and after. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what put me over the top. The other one, too, is, um, Cujo a little higher on O's list. Cause I think Cujo deserves a lot of love. And O had Mitch Marner farther down, which I would agree. Cause Rick Vive, I think, should be, uh, what O laid out about the 50 wow. goals. But, wow, but wow, I, wow. I, I respect the list on both sides. I love that Dougie Gilmore got one because you guys know how much I love Dougie and we all love him. So on Hayes's list, it's not like yours is junk. Yours is fantastic. It's possible just, friend stealing attempt there. Another one. I listen, I've said it many times before. I think it's the greatest, you know, 
two seasons in Leaf history, I, I personally don't think it's up for debate. I understand there wasn't a Stanley Cup there. Right. But Gilmore in 93-94, 127 points, then 111 points. I mean, I don't have to make the case for Doug yeah. Gilmore. No, we, we but... all love him. And so uh, Gilmore, even in the, the top three, top two, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Matthews at two. I think you both are like, this guy's on the cusp He's of right being one. There. Just He's just got to win. It's the so, playoffs. He's so there's the difference the between Gilmore and Keon for me. And mm-hmm. all I've been told, again, yeah. because I didn't watch, was that Keon. So that's why I lean towards O's list. Yep. And, and okay? that's totally reasonable. It's, it's a good fair, point. Right? I, I looked at it, again, as if, what happened prior to 67 did not exist, but it did. Like, that did happen, and he had established his cups and his greatness, and he still played for a long time after that. I think he played seven or eight years after that, and left in 75 or 76. Right. So he played a long time, and Dave Keon, uh, you know, is is established and has been established based on votes and the 100-year team and all that. The anniversary team was the number one greatest Leaf ever. So yeah. I, I'm not here to fight against that. It's – you know, it's my list, my personal list, but, starting but in 67. But let's see what the masses say, guys. Let's, let's see. see what the masses say. see what the say masses because say. There's going to be people say. that that are loving your list, Hayes, just based on Dougie G, because that was their wheelhouse. They grew what up a week, they, guys. right there. What a week. Right? I yep. got to tell you, Saturday, I got waved over into the jogging group, and then this, you picked my <laughs> list. It's like getting drafted first overall, and then a year later winning the CHL mm-hmm. top prospect. I, it's the same feeling. It's the same feeling. It's a feeling. great feeling, huh? Well, it is. It's greatness. It's a great feeling. Well, here's yeah. you know what we should do, too, Doogie? Maybe underneath this poll, like, I know oh, you're down. here we go the, with a no, stipulation no, no. that's no, no, going to no. jam I'm not. me I'm up. saying the honorable mention, who was the biggest omission from our list? Because yes, we, we have the same right. 10 they, players. They, We're the same 10 players. Would it be Lanny, Felix, Podfan? I was just going to say, where's Cabby, Felix Riley? with you guys? Felix where's is Felix? high. Felix he's is high. high, man. He's high. He's he was like high. circulating, sniffing around the that, the outskirts of the list, but yep. could have easily gone in there. But yep. but this is what's crazy, guys. You guys had the exact same people. I know. So that's what's really cool about this because it was hard to choose. I just you know you, now it's just jockey. It's moving deck chairs around. That's really right. what it is. Yeah. This, I, I'm with Hayes. Who's the greatest player omitted from this list? Like, Let's who's not on this list that is the best player that, that was overlooked? And, yes. got to be Lanny McDonald. Uh, yeah, it's because be William Lanny Nylander, for, for me, is not there yet, but he might be. Not but far he, you off, could say you could have, should have. And but, people don't even think about had, asking had success, me. success, though. Like, don't, yeah, gotta, I hear you. I hear you. you know? Don't think about asking me us to do tomorrow a top ten list of guys that are on this list because we're done. <laughs> no, no. But <laughs> I'm done. just saying there's got to be one guy that we're missing that was like, okay, that guy was unbelievable. Like. I don't. I think McGillney, if I were to answer, I think Lanny McDonald comes to mind. It's for me. It's either Lanny, Felix, Riley, or Caberlet. I had Caberlet on, and I was moving things around, and I was going back and forth between Caberlet and Riley because they they both played so long here. Like Caberlet, I think yeah. still has another hundred games on where Riley is right now, but he's not far off. Like he was here for like twelve years. It's a great leaf. That's yeah. another thing. Longevity. Riley and Caberlet were here for a long, long time. Some of these yep. guys came and went. Cujo was here for four years. You know, Dougie was here for about four. Um, so Speak to how great they were in those four years. Absolutely. Though, right? absolutely. But it's, it's pretty cool. And I, I think, you know, that's where I, in my mind I was like, okay, Felix could be there potentially mm-hmm. at how loved he was here. Yep. Uh, Caberlet snuck up on me, but you're right. Like you Cabby look at how he was such a, a great player. Um you know, is there somebody? Maybe Eddie there's somebody. Belfour. That, Eddie Belfour. Eddie Belfour was a really good leave. Dave the, Andrzejczyk is a guy Mike that was Palmatier. a really good leave. Oh, I Mike love Palmatier. Mike Palmatier. Yeah. That was my guy growing up, right? Like yep. that's that's absolutely. You know, All right. so it, it's there's some great names, but that's what we need. The lists were awesome because the same guys, but we need who is not on that list that mm-hmm. should be there. I'll say that's Darcy I Tucker. I'll say I'll well, throw Tucker. So. That's Tucks. my probably my pick. Oh, that's look at this little mission. nugget here. Who has yeah. the great, the best list of greatest Maple it's Leafs? Early. O-Dog, 63.1. It's still early. Hey, 36.9. Don't get excited here. Don't, don't get excited. Hey, I'm not oh, going to get excited. there might be some mail-in ballots that switch, <laughs> switch things around. Uh, I, I'm coming in late. Exactly. This is early, man. Yeah. Yeah. This There's is some real mail-in early. ballots that are my, still my, in there. My fans are waiting outside, right? They're not leaving. <laughs> They're not leaving until they get the votes in. Yeah. Um, all right, so there you, there you go. Chris Johnston <laughs> coming up in 15 minutes on, on Matthews chasing down 60 and catching it on Saturday night. What does he expect, the final nine games? Riley won't play tonight. When does he play? Marner won't play tonight. When does he play? 
Uh, Leafs Panthers tonight. It's a big one. So CJ coming up in about 15. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. All right, so we just uh, unveiled our top 10 Leafs since 67, all right? People are yelling at us. They're like, you know, where's where's Charlie Charlie Conacher? It's like, guys, (laughs) since 67, okay? Tim Horton wasn't going to be on the list. No, and I will say one thing, guys, moving forward. A week today, I am going to pit you two against each other for the top 10 Stanley Cup contenders this season. I love it. So get ready for it. Bring I'm going to be the judge. And Hazy B, you need a bounce back, as proven in the poll and what I just did to you. So it's a big week for you next Monday. Well, it, that's very premature. I mean, you're, you're calling your shot here, dude. This is two hours. All right, the poll's just open. People are just getting off work. They're going to jump on Twitter, at Overdrive1050, right. and they're going to start voting for my list. I'm telling you, it's already starting to swing. It's starting to move. Right. Yeah. John King and his goofy political boards up there saying there's still a lot of votes coming in. (laughs) A lot of votes. Wolf Blitzer, like a complete stiff staring at the war at the board. It's early in the evening. Very early. All right. So things are moving and shaking. And I I have a belief that my list will prevail in the end. Um, All right. That'll be rigged. If you come back and somehow uh, you're calling uh, you're you're calling rigged. I will. You're going to go Trump in Georgia on this. If this if you flip this, (laughs) you're planting the seeds now. For yes. a fake election. A you fake, fake news. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's shameful. That's really disappointing to hear. Just uh, let it play out. That's let it. Let it play out. Let it play out. Let the people speak. All right. CJ coming up in the next hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.